name is uh, Nian Murray. He's from the Athlone Institute in Ireland. This work was done by a group from Ireland and India, joint work. And he's going to present something very interesting. Uh, we are here at a multimedia systems conference, but most of the talks are about video and audio. He's going to speak about the sense of smell, which is not much investigated yet. So it's going to be a fun talk by uh, Niall Murray. Okay. Microphone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as I said, my name is Niall Murray and I'm from Athlone Institute of Technology in Ireland. Um, I'm here on behalf of m myself and my supervisors, Dr. Young Song Chow, Dr. Brian Lee, Gabriel Montin, and Karnakar Kotagar. Um, the title of the paper is Subjective Evaluation of Olfactory and Visual Media Synchronization. So as I said, a lot of the work here has been on video, different types of video, so my work is a little bit different, but also related because it's in the multimedia synchronization area. So to provide an outline of what I'm going to discuss today, um, why is this important, first of all? So to talk about the motivation for the work. Um, this work is very closely related to some works that are published in State of the Art, so I'm going to give a small bit of information on that and what is specifically different in, in this paper. Um, because scent is quite new, there's a number of factors that we need to consider when executing tests with scent. So I'm going to introduce a few terms within olfactory psychophysics. I'm going to talk about my experimental setup and the assessment methodology followed by a discussion on my results in terms of definition of the temporal relationship between the olfactory and visual media, and then the impact of intermediate skew on the quality of experience. Um, I'll conclude then and talk about some plans I have for future work. So why am I looking at this particular topic? Um, if we can stimulate other senses outside audiovisual, audio video, sen audiovisual senses, we can try to enhance the user perceived experience. And um, we can provide additional information that's relevant outside of what's provided by audio and video. And related to what was mentioned by the in the keynote on Wednesday by Dr. Shmolik, where he talked about strain on. Uh, visual sense, the brain, when looking at 3D, um, we can spread relevant information across senses, so we're reducing the load on audiovisual. Um, so the specific topic I'm looking at is in order to achieve this, the temporal to, to achieve this meaningfully, the temporal relations between the media must remain intact, but we actually don't really know at this point what the temporal relations are between olfactory and videos, and that's this, the context. So state-of-the-art publications in this area are from Dr. George Kenea and Dr. Alu Wakemi, I hope I pronounced that correct, at Moye, um, who did work in Braille University. Um, so in their work, they looked at olfactory video and audio in a multimedia experience. I have looked at the same, olfactory video and audio. But I'd ask you to consider this statement published, this statement here in the Handbook of Multisensory Processes, um, whereby it states that the cross-modal effects, the interaction of the senses, can have a major influence on how environments are perceived, even to the extent that large amounts of detail perceived by one sense may be ignored when in the presence of other more dominant sensory inputs. Okay, so in the work of Gene and Adamoye, the audio provided contextual information. So the user got contextual information visually through audio and through the scent. In my work, the user got contextual information visually through scent but not through audio. 
So there was one less source of information from a contextual point of view. Now I did use audio in the tests, but the context of the audio had no relation to what the user was smelling or what the user was viewing. Okay, so basically my tests were about what is the impact of this in terms of the temporal relation between the video clip and the audio. Something along the lines, so say for example there was a clip about perfume. They'd be talking about the perfume manufacture process throughout the clip. And then in the middle section of the video clip, the content was specific to where they saw someone spraying perfume, something along the lines of this. So that's exactly it. They actually would talk about the content of the clip. So the context of the audio provided context, contextual information. So I w wanted to look to see if this had any impact on the perceived temporal relationship. Okay, so when looking at scent, um, there's a couple of specific considerations we need to look at. Scent is a chemical media, so we perceive it by the interaction of odor molecules with the sense sensors in our nose. So it's actually a physical interaction whereby molecules are absorbed in the mucus in the nose and the electrical signal is then sent to the brain where it's processed. Um, there's a f some number of phenomenon, specifically olfactory adaptation and anosmia. So olfactory adaptation is about where if we are subjected continuously over a longer period of time to a scent, the nerve activity in our nose decreases to the po point so that we actually can't sense the smell any further. So the literature has reported that when presenting scent, it should be for short periods to avoid that. There's a number of different olfactory thresholds. Detection threshold is the minimum concentration of scent where it needs to be presented such that we can actually detect the scent is present. There's a recognition threshold where it's the minimum, amount, minimum concentration of scent such that we can actually recognize the scent. And then there's a terminal threshold where by the concentrations above a certain value, we don't actually perceive any difference in concentration of the scent. Anosmia is the other consideration. Some people just cannot smell certain scents. Some people cannot smell scents of flowers, for example, or sense of smell of chocolate. Others can. So these are the kind of things we need to consider when working with users in subjective testing. So to talk about the experimental setup and the assessment methodology, um, we had 43 assessors in total, 20 female, 23 male from ages 19 years to 56 years, from a wide variety of backgrounds. So they weren't all just part of our group or our institute technology. Um, I'm going to talk about, and just on that, it's a recommendation when you're doing subjective testing that you have an even balance across age and between sexes. I'll talk a small bit about the olfactory display or the scent emitter. Um, the scents I used or we used in these tests were burning, the smell of flowers, the smell of curry, the smell of rubbish, which is not very pleasant, um, a resinous scent, which is kind of a woody scent, and a fruity scent. That is a, a nice mix of pleasant and unpleasant, what we would classify as pleasant and unpleasant. And the literature reports that when you're carrying out a uh, scent test, you should try and balance it in this way. Um, the scent emitter I used was the SBI V2 from a, comp a French company called Exhalia. Um, it's difficult, very difficult actually, to obtain a commercial olfactory display for olfaction enhanced multimedia. Um, there's just not that many available. There's a few companies, two companies in the US who are, who have stated that they're going to make commercially available two devices in the near future. Uh, one call, from a company called Sense Sciences and another from a company called Sensory Acumen. But I haven't been able to get access to those yet so I'm looking forward to when they become available. So a small bit more information on the device from Exalia in France. So this is the device here. These are the scent cartridges. 
and this is a, a bespoke extension I designed for the actual emitter. So you can see, I hope, that you can slot up to four different sent cartridges into the actual emitter. The emitter then presents the scent by turning on the fan. Okay. I added this spoke extension to the emitter in order to have some more control over where we wanted to send the scent. You can see here, this device would be designed for a general presentation, whereas I wanted the scent to be presented to the user olfactory field. The reason I have done this is I want to an issue with scent is it's slow moving. Okay. And I want to try and focus the scent on the particular area where the people can smell. Not much point in having scent floating down here. Okay, um, this caption here is the, the lab I, people will carry the tests in. So you can see we have the video display, the scent emitter, and I have a bottle of water. Okay, the reason for the bottle of water is to have consistency between assessors in terms of their position of their olfactory field. Someone very tall, sitting high, there could be six or six inches difference between someone small, okay? The difference between people's chin and their nose, I consider it as negligible. So it's, I always get, or any paper I've sent for review, I always get funny comments on this, but I'm not interested in uh, controlling or devices that control where people's noses are. I just want something that keep consistency between people. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to talk about there. Okay, so as I said a few moments ago, um, scent is slow moving and it lingers. So I wanted to be able to control as much as possible when the scent was presented in terms of the particular content in the video clip. Now I hope you can see this. I carried out a complimentary test with eight smells whereby a user, as the scent was emitted, the fan was turned on, and once the user detected the scent, they hit the mouse button. Okay, so eight scents with 15 people, each scent presented twice randomly, and this is the kind of times on average that we got for each of the different scents. I also included here maximum min value, so some of the larger values might have had by a user as the scent was emitted, the fan was turned on, and once the user detected the scent, they hit the mouse button. Okay, so eight scents with 15 people, each scent presented twice randomly, and this is the kind of times on average that we got for each of the different scents. I also included here maximum min value, so some of the larger values might have happened because a user might have actually been breathing out when the scent was initially presented. So we need, to we need to consider that as well. So on the percent basis, in the actual tests, I took each of these values into consideration when determining how long it would take the scent to reach from the emitter to the user's olfactory field. Okay. I should also say at this point as well, to address scent lingering, and also to address the fact that assessors could detect very slightly a small change in air movement when the fan is turned on. So what you do in that, what I did in that case was, I always had a, had a fan running. So I just loaded the one cent cartridge for each video clip, and what I classified as an odor cartridge and a non-odor cartridge. So when I didn't want scent presented, the non-odor cartridge would run. All it's blowing is gentle non-odor air to the user. That fan is switched off, the odor cartridge fan is turned on to actually present the scent. Okay, so the actual video content um, was in the form of cookery programs, documentaries, and news shows. And I should state at this point and thank um, Dr. Ganea and Dr. Aramoya. They gave me the videos that they use in their tests so I could do a correct comparison when I took out the contextual audio. Each of the clips lasted 90 seconds. Okay, so I edited these clips such that there was three, three clear boundaries. Before sent, the boundary where sent should be pre presented, and then after sent. So 
So each video clip had three blocks. Before when sent should be permit emitted, when sent should be emitted, and then if sent arrived late, or for video, the video content should be after sent. So only the middle 30 second block had the visual content specific to the sent. Before and after that, it didn't. Okay, so the assessment methodology is based on the DCR category rating or degradation category rating, whereby we present two each clip twice. The first time I presented the clip, the olfactory enhanced clip, it was synchronized presentation of the sent and video. The second time, so we consider that the reference sample. The second time, the presentation could have been either synchronized again or it could have a skew between the video and the scent. So the users answered questions on the reference, uh, on the sample under test. Okay, the skews between the video and scent. So as I said, this block here from 30 seconds to 60 seconds had a video content which was relevant to the scent the user was being presented with. In advance of this, so everything here from zero to 25 seconds, if the scent was presented in that time, it was before video. If it was presented after this time, from 60 seconds to 90 seconds, it was after video. Okay, so perfectly synchronized presentation would mean that the scent would arrive here. So on the scent axis, it's zero skew, but on the video axis, it's 30 seconds. So this 30 second block corresponds to 30 to 60 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds in the video clip. Okay, so I also tested in jumps of five seconds from, so the user's experience skews of 30 seconds in advance, 25 seconds in advance, 20, 15, and so on. No, um, the audio I used was actually the, so the sound of a blown fan. So they had a set of headphones on where they, they couldn't... Um, oops. Set of headphones on, they actually couldn't detect, hear the noise of the fan. So th that was twofold. I didn't want them to take the noise of the fan, and I also wanted to have some sort of audio in the, in the scene, but not provide any contextual information. Yes. Exactly, yeah. So mm. these were taken into consideration, these lag times, the average value taken into consideration. So say for if it takes three seconds for rubbish sent to reach the user's olfactory field from the emitter, I started the fan at after 27 seconds in order to be synchronized. Yeah. So, okay, the questionnaire and answers. So there was five um, statements slash questions that the user answered after every presentation of the sample under test. Okay, so the first statement that the user had to agree with was relative to the content of the video clip, the smell was released. So the purpose of this question was to evaluate how good assessors are at detecting the presence of skew. The, so they either answered from a scale of too early, either early or late meant they thought it was in sync, or too late. The second question was specific to, to try and evaluate the user's perception of a skew if they detected it or not. So in the event that you may have perceived the video clip and smell to be out of sync, please indicate the extent to which it impacted upon you. Okay, so if they got, if they did not detect a skew, they might have initiated that it was imperceptible. If they detected the skew, they said it was okay. They would select perceptible, not annoying. And what I hoped was that we would kind of get a range in terms of how they perceived the skew based on that scale. So statements 
three, four, and five in the questionnaire were designed to test the impact of intermediate skew on the assessor uh, quality of experience. So the working definition on quality of experience from the QualiNet group is the QOE is the degree of delight or annoyance of the user of an application or service. The results from the fulfillment of his or her expectations with respect to the utility and or enjoyment of the application or service. So to try and determine the impact of skew between the scent and the video and the imp on qu quality of experience, the assessors rated their agreement or disagreement with these three statements. They were ordered in terms from being general to more specific. So the first statement, you enjoyed watching the video clip, the user either did or didn't. That necess not necessarily, some people just might not like scent and video. Just, that can happen. Um, the smell, when presented, was relevant to what I was watching. So what I was trying to understand here was the impact of skew on the relevance. And the last question, the smell contributes to a heightened sense of reality while watching the video clip. So does scent actually increase reality? So for those three statements, the users either agree, strongly disagreed down to strongly disagreed. Strongly agreed to disagreed even. So some results. So the first two slides here are on users' detection, ability to detect and the perception of SKU. So we can see that users can actually detect this scale here is sent presented if it's minus 30 seconds in advance of the video. So this time here, if you recall the video and time axis, this would be zero seconds in the video axis. So we can see that users can detect the presence of SKU very well at in sync time. Um, they were neither agreeing or disagreeing with the question that the smell was released earlier or late. Um, what we can also notice, which is I think is actually interesting, is the assessor's opinion on skew before sent before video. We can see here that for if the scent is presented five seconds in advance of when it should be the assessors give it a rating of around 1.7, okay? So if you compare that 1.7 up to three, and compare the same value for five seconds later, it was much closer to being in sync. And that trend extends across up to 20 seconds, okay? And what's interesting about this, and I'll talk this about a bit more later on, is this is a little bit different from the state-of-the-art results where contextual audio is present. In terms of a level of annoyance, again, if we compare plus five seconds with minus five seconds, there's a big difference in terms of how users perceive the experience. And we can see a slower fall off on annoyance when sent is presented after a video uh, compared to uh, sent before video. You can look in details, look at the details in the paper where I discuss these in in depth. So in terms of discussion of assessor perception and detection, assessors were very accurate in their detection of skew. Assessors were more sensitive to scent before olfaction before sense, but not were more sensitive to olfaction before video than they were this distance. Instead of 0.5 meters, it could be quite different. So in terms of quality of experience, again we can see that the assessor sense of enjoyment, they, in, they agreed with this question about it. they enjoy the scent from here to here, minus five, and it tailed off again slower for olfaction after video. Impact and sense of relevance, quite an interesting value here at plus 15, where they actually felt it was very relevant at this time. Again, you can notice the trend in all these results is that users were more acceptable to olfaction presented after video. And finding the sense of reality, and this is very interesting again, we can see very slow fall off on values for a scent after video, even up to plus 20 seconds. 
say the value for plus 20 seconds in terms of reality matches the value for mi minus 5 and 10 seconds. So impact on QOE, olfaction ahead of video has a more negative impact than olfaction after video. This is not all bad. It demonstrates the viability for olfaction as a warning mechanism. Also in terms of QE, the presence of scent does have a negative impact. And that brings me to state of the art. When contextual audio is present, the synchronization boundary is minus 30 to plus 20. They use the vortex actor from Del Air, and they use step sizes of 10 seconds instead of five seconds, which I've used. The same sense, same video clips. There was a slight difference in some of the questions. So, conclude. The synchronization boundary for olfactory and visual media, that's why the title of the paper is Subjective Evaluation of Olfaction and Visual Media instead of Video, because the focus on the visual is significantly different from olfactory, video, and audio. Intermediate skew outside a particular range has a negative effect on quality of experience, and the future work will be the definition of user profiles based on age, sex, nationality, and percent. Also plan to do some work involving scenarios where more than one on factory stream is present or presented. And as part of the definition of user profiles, have a fuzzy model-based presentation of scent and video. That's it. Thanks. Thank you very much, Niall. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to go to the movies pretty soon and then have smell in the movie theaters. Questions? Um, I like the, pla the plastic bottle. It's a, it's a, it's an Irish answer to uh, yeah. a, an interesting problem. Um, <coughs> I don't have numbers, so you had all your different people, all different ages, and you had your scents. I'm assuming one cent per 90 seconds? Um, the scent was only presented for 30 seconds. Just one. One cent, yeah. yeah. But the smell was provided for a whole 30 seconds or any time within the 30 seconds? For a whole 30 seconds. All so right. the fan was actually running for 30 seconds. And yeah. did every user do every skew and every um, cent? Every cent, every skew except one in the step size from minus 30 seconds up to plus 30. Mustafa. So you, di you didn't show us the videos, but, but I'm curious whether you think the, how, how close uh, the, the source of the scent would look in the video yeah. uh, would be to the acceptance of the delay, especially the, the, t the, the lag in the scent. Yeah, I don't have the clips with me, but that's actually a really interesting question. Um, I was, I've been thinking about looking at depth in the scene and the impact of that, which I think you're talking about. Um, the videos were a mix. Some were close up and some were quite far away. The burn and clip was quite far away, far, far away in the distance, whereas the, the rubbish scene was quite close up. Yeah. I would imagine when it's close up, you, you, you would really expect the sense. Quicker. Closer, you'd be annoyed if you yeah, um, th that would be an, an interesting set of tests to run if we could compare depth of the actual object which is associated with the scent. Uh, which I, I actually plan to run, but I'm trying to, hoping to get uh, uh, the other access to other devices to see what they're capable of doing before I do that. Okay, I, I have a question on the methodology. How did you profile out the, the people who did not smell certain scents? I mean, you know, in audio visual or also in the 3D, there are certain uh, uh, methods how to determine whether people are colorblind, whether they perceive 3D at all, and at which level, and so on. Uh, I'm wondering how you do did that for, for this test. So if they suffer from one of the conditions where they couldn't smell a scent, that's the question. Um, before I ran the tests, I had a quick dummy run with each of the tests, the scents I was going to use in the test to actually see if they could actually detect it. It was as simple as that. You said that <coughs> you used a single user for uh, multiple SKUs or multiple configurations. Yeah. So uh, I come from IR and uh, I, I got educated by Nicholas Pelking about the factors of learning and fatigue and uh, yeah. configuration bias, which are pretty important when you are moving in, into the territory of uh, QOE. Mm. So 
how did you consider those? Okay, in terms of user learning, okay, this skew is this value, this skew is this value. The actual skews, they weren't executed in that order, they were randomized. And um, the second question then was? Fatigue. Fatigue, yeah. yeah. So the, the actual scenario involved, the user sat at the device, were presented with the reference sample followed by the sample under test. Okay, between those, I turned on the fan you saw in the, in the clip, between the reference and the sample under test. Once they had experienced both of those, they went to the far end of the room, they walked to the far end of the room, they completed the questionnaire, and they came back. So there was an, actually a, a reasonable amount of time between, when, between consecutive tests. So um, that was something I was actually concerned about when I had a lot of step sizes. Uh, you know, each assessor experienced maybe 12 clips. You know, so there was, was a lot there. But um, if I've detected or people, have, I felt that people were becoming somewhat fatigued, we might take a break in the middle of the test. So the configuration bias, but I, I suppose you randomized the uh, uh, configurations for, for the users. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so I think we don't have much time for, for more questions, okay. so I'd like to take you to the break if you have more interesting questions. Thank you. Thank you.